Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the 45th and best creative morning <laughs> talk, hopefully. Um, OK, I've got to figure out how to use this. Uh, let me see. There we go. So first off, I, I purposely used Comic Sans for this first slide to kind of annoy the art directors uh, out there. Um, I'm a kind of a type kind of whore, too, so I just wanted to kind of like raise people's blood pressure. So I'll fix that right now. <laughs> How did I get here? Um, obviously, you guys know about the, uh, the Pothole Project. Uh, as Kim mentioned, I was in advertising for 25 years as a designer, and I did a lot of brand identity work. And this first piece plays off the Chicago flag and just being very simple and kind of branding a pothole as if, uh, you know, you're a proud Chicagoan, and God damn it, that's the best pothole, you know, <laughs> in the land. We do it best. So, Can you hold the mic a little sorry, yeah, um, a little bit nervous. I don't do this too often. Uh, the background, how I got all this going was back in the 1990s, I had an opportunity to go to Europe for the first time. And I kind of reluctantly went. A buddy of mine had been transferred to Paris. He says, you got to come out. And so I did. And that trip really kind of changed my life because in Europe, you can, you know, in the, in the States, you, it's tough to find something that's 300 years old. In Europe, you know, you trip over stuff that's 2,000 years old. You can sit on a column drum and no one cares, and it's 2,000 years old. It's just so cool. So it lit a fire uh, in me to learn more about ancient history. So this is me somewhere in Turkey being a dork, and uh, it's me somewhere else. And so, so when you get into ancient history, you inevitably fall into uh, ancient art. And the few forms of ancient art that survive are mosaics and sculpture because they're so durable. You know, the paintings, you know, they, they just can't last 2,000 years unless they're in the tomb or something like that. Um, so I was exposed to these ancient mosaics. And when you think of ancient mosaics, you think of religious things and you think of geometric things, that's typically the, typically the top, uh, the subject matter of it. And what's fun is when you come across the ones that have a little bit of character of the space or the artist that did it. This was in Sicily and, it, and it's, you know, these exercising bikini clad women. And it's, it's from the fourth century and it's just kind of fun and you don't see this kind of stuff in mosaic too much. And this kind of harkens to what I do. Um, this is another piece also in Sicily where it's a, uh, it's a uh, chariot race, but instead of horses being depicted, it's got these charioteers on flamingos and swans and geese and whatnot. So the theory is that maybe this was a kid's room or something. And I just love this kind of stuff because it's so infrequently seen. It's, again, it's mostly religious stuff, and, and to see this kind of stuff really kind of uh, captured my attention. Um, the other thing that you see a lot is geometric patterns in, in ancient, um, in ancient uh, mosaics. They love, these, they love the art form because it's, it, um, it uh, replaced rugs partially because rugs are expensive. You could do a mosaic floor and it would last indefinitely. Does anybody happen to know where that mosaic might be? Any idea? In terms of, not, not necessarily the place, but like the type of room. Nobody, really? Okay. Where? where? Bathroom is right. Yeah, those are, um, the ancient Romans had communal bathrooms, whether it be 20 or 30 seats, and you were in a room together. And so that's a couple of seats there on the left. Um, <laughs> true. I, I, could, I could go, I know I, I, you guys aren't interested. Well, maybe you are, but I can't. There's, there's some very interesting stories behind that, but that's not why I'm here today. And for that, for that uh, correct answer, you get a pothole patch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, so I continued my, I don't know, 
passion, uh, dorky passion with ancient history, and I signed up to be a volunteer on a dig in Pompeii in 2001. It was mostly students, 95% students or something like that, and uh, about five or six of us dorks that actually paid to be a volunteer. <laughs> this is, uh, we were in the northwest corner of the city, uh, really hard, really hot, unbelievably cool. It's the coolest thing I've ever done. Five or six weeks, they didn't feed us enough, and it was just very intense. It was really cool. But, and you slept in the same tent for six weeks straight. You brought the tent, you, it was just insane. Uh, so that's me on the left, doing some grunt work. Um, more me. Beefcake shot. Um, so, you know, so I was really into the ancient history thing. And so I took classes in Ravenna, Italy, which is uh, by uh, Venice. And I learned the ancient technique that very, people, very few people do in the States. It's more popular in Europe, but it's really tedious. It's expensive, and it's, it's just kind of a pain in the ass. But that's how far the passion went. So from 1999 on, in my free time, I would work on mosaics. And so I've got a couple examples here. And it, you know, you'll see, you know, because I was in advertising, and there's a lot of consumerism that's pulled in. This series in particular, you know, it's kind of talking about the adoration of coffee that a lot of us have, uh, fast food, um, again, taking the halo from a saint and, and putting it a, a, around a you know, McDonald's french fries. Um, this is a piece called Evidence of Burberry, where I've kind of implied that it's a, uh, that it's a fragment, a found fragment, and this, this, you know, this robed figure happens to have a, a Burberry scarf around her. <laughs> So a little bit of dry wit, a little bit of my personality coming through, which is also kind of what I got into because you could cap these mosaics and the technique that I, that I use is so durable that you can capture a thought that is yours that's going to be around indefinitely. These things last forever. Um, another in that series is evidence of Nike, where you see a fragment of a gladiator's uh, sandal and, uh, of course, I got the Nike swoosh. Did I just do something? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, whoa, back up. Didn't close your eyes. OK. <laughs> Some of my more recent work is uh, the Fresh Meat series, which just recently sold. I was happy to, to have happen. But this was, again, taking the idea of uh, such a permanent art form and capturing something that isn't permanent, like fresh meat, that's going to probably look different tomorrow, and, uh, and just kind of doing a still life of it. There was also chicken and Italian sausage that was part of that series. Oh, oh let me back up. Um, the most recent series I had at a show at Packer Shop Gallery last December, which has since closed, um, where I took vintage cereals from the 60s and 70s and 80s and incorporated them into um, ancient still lifes. So I did the research and made sure that all the animals and the fruits and the backgrounds and the tables are all, all existed back around you know, 0 AD, and then incorporated these ridiculous cereals that actually existed. Um, and I'll show you a second one here, which is Sugar Smacks, which is actual, an actual box from like 1967 that had a Star Wars, or not Star Wars, Star Trek um, tie-in. So that's what I did on the side. And come May 20th, 2013, uh, it was a particularly bad pothole season and particularly bad on our street up on the northwest side. And there were potholes that, you know, they get fixed every three, four months or something like that, but there was never a permanent fix. And uh, so there was one in front of our house that just, can, you just, just wouldn't stay repaired. And so I got thinking, you know, I, I'm into this durable art form and I've got this not durable solution uh, that the, the city workers are doing every four months in front of my house. Why don't I combine the two? So this is kind of where this whole thing started. Um, filled up uh, the, pot, the pothole with, uh, with concrete as my 87-year-old neighbor kind of was a lookout on his porch to make sure cops didn't show or anything like that. <laughs> because, you know, I'm like, I'm too, I am out in the street. I'm too old to be getting in trouble with the cops. It's ridiculous. It's, you know, I've got nine-year-old twins. It's really hard to explain, you know. <laughs> Not cool. Not cool, Dad. Um, 
And so this is kind of how the first one turned out. It, uh, you know, it turned out okay. I learned some lessons about protecting it. Um, you know, I needed traffic cones because cars run over them and they destroy them. Uh, so it was a learning process for the first half dozen or so. Um, that's a shot of the same pothole uh, from two different views on the street to give you kind of like perspective and size and all that kind of thing. Um, my neighbor across the street was saying, hey, Jim, can I do a Facebook post of that thing you did out in the street? I'm like, nah, you know, I was in the middle of landing the CTA commission. I, I had gotten it, but I hadn't started the fabrication yet, and I was worried that I was going to get in trouble, and they might pull it or something. Like, I just couldn't afford it. It was such a big deal to get that commission. I couldn't afford you know, to lose it. And I'm like, no, no, don't, don't. I'm not even going to admit that I did it. I, I just, <laughs> let's keep it on the QT. This actually is the, the commission that uh, Kim mentioned earlier. It's uh, Thorndale, about seven, eight stops north of Wrigley Field. Turned out great, really happy with that, but that's, that's another story. Um, so, you know, I, I kept it on the lowdown, and I kind of told friends to just, you know, just, I don't want to draw attention to myself. However, one of my friends couldn't resist and started kind of spreading the word about this ridiculous guy in the northwest side of Chicago that was filling potholes with art and he contacted Fox News. <laughs> and I, uh, you know, I, so, you know, soon, you know, I, I don't know, it was, a, it was the glare of the lights that attracted me like a moth. I'm like, okay, sure, I'll do it. You know, so I come out of the, the woodwork and so they did, um, they did a live remote. It was, it was 14 degrees out in January and we did three live remotes. This is how it turned out. It actually never, actually set in the ground, it froze in the ground. It, the concrete never set, it looked decent. Um, it snowed the next day, we had snow cover for six weeks after, it was fine. Two days of warm weather after that, and the whole thing came up because the concrete never set. So it's a lesson learned um, about that. Come along to about the sixth um, install, also on the northwest side, uh, which was part of my serial series, which kind of made, implied that the city actually documented all the potholes and that they were going to, you know, repair them at their leisure. Uh, and this one turned out perfect. It was, it, I couldn't have done a, a, a better job. Uh, or not, I, it couldn't have turned out better. Um, this recently, maybe a month ago, got pulled up because the, the, the street was repaired, but it was still in perfect condition. So it kind of bums me out when they get pulled up, but I am playing in the streets and it's just part of the deal. <laughs> Uh, from there, uh, this was in the Gold Coast. This also recently was covered up. Um, this was a series that featured the phone number of a nearby auto repair shop. Um, and I didn't, you know, I didn't, a I just did it. I didn't ask them. I'm like, you know, if they get some business out of it, great. If not, whatever. Um, and uh, the aforementioned flower pothole series in the West Loop was uh, later in, uh, late summer, early fall last year. So it was a flower pot hole, flower pot hole or flower pot hole series. Uh, this one's also gone, street repair took it away. In my head, I'm thinking some construction guy brought it home to his wife, but I doubt it. Um, oh, back up a second. Uh, this one I think still exists. There was a total of five flowers, four in the ground. This of course is daffodils. Uh, that one's still around, I think, again in the West Loop. So I'm not sure what the definition of viral is exactly, but um, during the course of what I've been doing, someone does a story and, and it just kind of catches fire and it's kind of fun to, to watch the spider webs of how people um, pick up on the story. So Fox News, of course, you know, did the thing and then had a great article in the Tribune back in March of 2014, and then the Reader, and then Hyperallergic, and Fast Company, and Gizmodo, and The Verge, and PBS did a segment, which was nice. A couple of radio spots locally, UK Daily Mail, ABC News online. And then they get an email. It was one of the greatest emails of my life <laughs> from Nike. And they were saying, hey, uh, we're refreshing our store in August of this year. We're going to close it down for two days, and we're looking for a relevant artist to help us out. You know, are you interested? So I had to think about that for a second, you know. Uh, and of course, um, so that, that made my day. Um, and this is how it, how it turned out. This is as, as it's drying. We've got the fans on it. But it's four by six feet. It plays off of the original um, branded pothole look. Uh, took a couple days to install, took a week or so to make in my garage. 
Um, but really happy with how that turned out. So that's a kind of a closer shot. So that exists to this day, and that'll be there until, I don't know, I, you can't get it out of the ground, I don't know, but the, maybe when they carpet it or something like that, it'll be fine. So the fun thing about this is May of 2013, I, I do this pothole in front of our house, and like 15 months later, I'm doing one in Nike Town. I'm like, that's fucking great, man. You know? <laughs> I, I just, I was, I was putting this thing together a couple days ago, and that is pretty cool, you know. I don't know, it's just, I just fun. Um, so then winter comes around, and I'm, I'm getting good at exactly how this all works. Pothole season is inversely proportional to my installation season. It, when it's too cold, I can't do it. So like a squirrel, I start to make artwork for the following season. Um, so I did that all winter long. The, uh, the pieces cost about 50 to 75 bucks a piece in materials. Um, and people had said, hey, you should do a Kickstarter campaign. I'm like, yeah, you're right, I probably should, blah, blah, blah. And then one day I finally did, in January of this year, I kind of asked for $300 for the first three pieces of the 2015 campaign. And it went like gangbusters. It pulled in about $4,600. So that financed nicely all of this year's uh, work. And when you donate to Kickstarter campaigns, the people kind of like to get rewarded for their generosity, which is cool. So, you know, I developed pothole t-shirts and stickers and signed prints and whatnot, and so those are all on, uh, you know, that's what people got depending on how much they donated, and those are all on my website too. Um, so that financed the first uh, series this, earlier this year called Treats in the Streets, which, which really took off. It was a lot of fun. People really uh, sparked to it. And, it. and again, it had to do with universal likes and dislikes. Potholes are universally disliked no matter who you are, no matter where you live, how much money you make, it doesn't matter, everyone hates them. And I tried to you know, think of like, what are universal loves? And so pretty much everyone loves ice cream. So, <laughs> and I tried to like do ones from my, child, my childhood that would spark to other people's childhood and, and just kind of make it fun. Totally unexpected, something that you uh, don't see in the street. Um, so this was the third of 10, and this was probably the most popular one. It really, uh, people really sparked to it. I didn't realize, but in the East, the, I call it a bomb pop, but uh, in the East Coast, I guess they're called firecrackers, which, I don't know. Um, so that was bomb pop. This was, uh, again, this is kind of confusing whether it's a creamsicle or a dreamsicle. I think it's the same thing. Um, so we did a couple of those, and then it was maybe March or something, I get an email from Uvascula, Finland. And it's from a pop-up gallery saying, hey, you know, would you be interested in coming out to be our resident street artist for our end of winter festival? I'm like, yeah, that sounds really cool. So talked it through and they, uh, we were able to, you know, make it work. And I came out there and I did six potholes in six days. So it was pretty intense. They were really, they're really, really good folks. This was our Dr. Seuss-like vehicle that we traveled around town. It was, I'm like, this thing was awesome. She got it from somewhere in California or whatever, but it was really cool, and it had everything we need, and we'd travel around town and, and, and do the installations on this thing. Um, this was a strawberry ice cream sandwich, a single scoop ice cream, mint chocolate chip, Baskin Robbins, that's key. Um, it's the they're the only ones that know how to do it. Um, and then this one I like best, even though it's not the most spectacular graphic, what I like best about this is I tried to um, speak to the locals and said, you know, what kind of ice creams like, did you guys grow up with? So this was, it's, I can't remember what the name of it is, but it's some local favorite. So at least it had the kind of same, the same spirit of hearkening to your childhood in Finland. So that was those three. And then uh, of course with the Finland, Finland, Finnish folks were opening you into a authentic Finnish sauna experience, <laughs> which it was you know, out of my comfort zone, but you know, you're in Rome, you gotta do what the Romans do kind of thing. And so, uh, you know, next thing you know, you're having beers with a bunch of naked men in a sauna for a couple <laughs> hours, sweating your ass off. But it was a lot of fun. It's just what they do. Everyone has a sauna there, it's just crazy. Um, and lastly, it, in uh, Finland, you know, I wanted to do, a, 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 I, I continued the Treats in the Street series, but I also wanted to do something special for Finland itself. That area of the world really uh, prizes equality. And, you know, you can look up anyone's salary. Everyone, if you boastful, it's looked down upon. And so I did this whole equal series. And it turns out uh, Angry Birds was uh, 
was uh, developed in Finland. So I did an Angry Birds on one side and a bird that's local to the area on the other side, and just kind of saying, no matter what bird you are, we're all the same. Um, same thing, no matter what fish you are, big, small, doesn't matter. And of course, the mighty oak and the acorn, just saying everyone's the same. So that was a Finland trip. I said goodbye to Finland on a midnight in, uh, in May. Came home, finished up the uh, Treats in the Street series, and then switched over to the Fanciest Potholes series, which is much more recent. This is now early summer of this year. Um, again, they're kind of like this ugly, nasty pothole with ridiculous high-end pattern, again, kind of hearkening to my branding background um, experience. And so the first one I did was Burberry. This is in the West Loop. Uh, this was uh, Louis Vuitton. And this is on the far north side. And then I did Gucci, uh, also in the West Loop. Cops stopped by, checked out, weren't happy with it. I was doing it, wanted me to keep moving on, asked for my permit. Just don't have a permit. Um, so I, I, I quickly got out of there for that one. So that leads me to kind of where I am today and where um, things go. And I don't really know where things go because there's no guidebook. I, you know, I, I, I like to ask somebody, it's like, hey, you know, I'm, we're, here's where I'm at. What am I supposed to be doing next? And it's like, but I don't have anyone to ask. So I just, I'm going to continue to kind of do what I do and just see what happens. And that's, it's, I've been pretty lucky so far with with surprises that show up in my mailbox or so, in my email box every so often. Um, so how did I get here? Basically, I didn't ask anyone's opinion. I followed my gut. And most importantly, I didn't ask for permission. Thank you. <laughs>